Hey guys, Kington here. Uh, I want to go over a pre-game slash lobby checklist with you guys. So this is everything you should be thinking about before you actually get into the game. Everything to like mentally prepare for so when you get into the game, you just have a clear picture to victory. I'll go into these uh, a lot more in detail, but first I'm just going to read them off before I go into the first one. So the first one is a list of champs to play and in what situation. The second one is who to ban. <clears throat> the third one is your summoner spells and runes. The fourth one is build paths throughout the game. Uh, five, win conditions for both teams. Six, uh, envisioning how you want your lane phase to go. All right, so before you even enter queue, you should have a list of champions that you want to play for each situation. Um, so you should have a champ that you can play blind pick um, into anything. Um, if your team's all hovering AP damage, then you might need AD damage oriented. If your team's all squishy, then you might need to be a tanky champ. Um, and again, maybe your team's all hovering or has picked all physical damage. So you need to have an AP damage oriented pick. So you should have um, these four ready that you can like blind pick into any laner. And then you should also have a list of counter picks that you like to play. All right, so here's an example list of um, champs. So for blind pick right now, I like to play Trendle. Uh, he also fits in as a tanky champ and an AD oriented champ. Um, and then for my AP damage oriented, I play Mordekaiser. And then there's also some counter picks that I play. All right, so Jax is countered by Gragas, um, Fjord is countered by Poppy, and I like to play Shivana into Garen. <clears throat> so I do have a much larger list, of course. Um, so there are more counters, and there's more counters um, specific for attack damage and AP. Like I can also use Poppy to counter Jax if I want more um, something tankier or more physical damage oriented instead of the AP damage oriented. But this is just a good example list to get you guys started. Next is who I ban. Um, so my biggest recommendation is if there's a champion that's picked on the enemy team that just automatically makes you emotional and tilted, just ban it. All right. Um, number two is if you have one champion you really like to play but it has a big counter, ban your counter. Um, number three, if you really don't care, you know, you're a solid player, doesn't matter to you, ask your teammates if they have a preference. A lot of people don't do this. I do it all the time. I don't really care what gets banned in most games. Um, so I'll just defer to my teammates. Next is who I ban. Um, so my biggest recommendation is if there's a champion that's picked on the enemy team that just automatically makes you emotional and tilted, just ban it. All right. Um, number two is if you have one champion you really like to play, but it has a big counter, ban your counter. Um, number three, if you really don't care, you know, you're a solid player, it doesn't matter to you, ask your teammates if they have a preference. A lot of people don't do this. I do it all the time. I don't really care what gets banned in most games, um, so I'll just defer to my teammates. All right, now that you've picked your champion, the next thing on the list is the summoner spells. Um, it's a more top lane oriented video. I kind of just have this one two checklist. <clears throat> um, so as top, generally, teleport flash is the way to go, but I have some criteria for what I take, and you're welcome to adapt it. Uh, so the first question I ask is, do I win this lane <clears throat> with teleport and flash, whether or not the enemy laner takes ignite? Um, so if the answer is yes, then I take teleport flash. Uh, if no, then I go to question two. <clears throat> and that's, do I win this lane with ignite and flash, whether or not the enemy laner takes ignite? If yes, then I take Ignite. And if no, then I take Teleport Flash. And Teleport in the late game is just such a great skill for split pushing. Um, that if you can win lane with Teleport, you know, even if they take Battle Sums, there's no reason not to take Teleport. Right? But if you know that if they take Ignite, and you don't also take Ignite, then you're going to lose lane, then it might be better to match them. Um, and just guarantee that you win lane, because most of the times, you know, people tell you win lane, you win game. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, Flash is interchangeable with Ghost if you prefer, and Ignite, Exhaust, also, same thing. After your Summoner spells comes Runes. 
Um, and runes differ so much game to game because there's so many champions and so many matchups and so many different ways to play the game. Um, I can't really cover even a fraction of it in this video. Um, I know there's programs like FaceCheck um, where it just kind of auto sets your runes for you. Um, and I've never used it, but I have lower elo friends that do use it and it always baffles me how they come to their conclusions there. <clears throat> so one example is one of my teammates was playing Garen top and the enemy picked Teemo and face check had Garen using grasp. You know, you're never going to proc grasp there against Teemo. I don't know why you would do that. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, <clears throat> so I don't like defaulting to something like face check. Um, use it as kind of getting an idea, but I highly recommend selecting your runes for the purpose of how you want to play the game, right? <clears throat> um, also, pro builds is really good, right? Because you can scam through really quick and see, okay, I'm playing Garen, would the players play against a ranged champion? You probably won't find a Teemo at the high elo play, um, but you might find like a Kennen, you know, similar matchup, and so you could build a similar way. So just try to use that as like a study material um, instead of a crutch. And I highly advise that you should have an idea of what runes to play for which champ before you even enter champ select. Like if you want to try a new champ, you should go on pro builds and you should see what types of different builds they go for different games and have a good idea of it before you even enter the game, right? Um, when you're playing the game, it's kind of like taking the test. You don't want to take the test unprepared, so you want to better prepare yourself before you even enter the game to have a better chance of success. Otherwise, you're just going in and, I don't know, la da you know, even, even practicing the mechanics, you're getting a bad idea for it if you're taking Glacial on Garen over Conquer because the damage output is going to be completely different. So do a little studying on the champion before you enter the game. Um, it, it'll make a huge difference. Next is your build pass throughout the game. Um, and you should again have a good idea of your possible build pass before you even decide what champion to play. Um, things to consider, do they have more physical or magic damage? Um, do I need tenacity? <clears throat> Will I need a QSS? Right? Do they have a couple suppresses? Um, do I need to tank for my team or do damage? Um, for top lane, what build path allows me to be successful in the split push? Um, and, you know, if their magic damage gets fed first, you might need to, you know, move up your priority on building magic resist. If their physical damage gets fed first, um, you might need to move up your priority on building armor. So all these things are something to take into account. And, it, you know, League's a complex game. It does get complex. I'm sorry I can't put everything into one 10-minute video. But just keep these things in mind um, and through little trial and error, you'll get a much better understanding of how to build. Okay, next is win conditions. Um, and this is the hardest thing to identify in solo queue by far. It's actually impossible to correctly identify these 99% of the time before you enter game. Um, so think of them as possible win conditions. Um, and they'll become less variable as you get into game in the first couple minutes. Usually, you can then narrow it down and pinpoint your actual win conditions. <clears throat> um, so if you don't know what conditions are, it's the conditions that need to be present in the game for either team to win. Right. So right now, Dragon Soul is typically the main win condition. Right. One team gets Dragon Soul and it's pretty much game over. Just gives them too much more power. Um, some other ones, uh, for the example here, they have a Kassadin, right? And Solo Q Kassadin is a huge win condition. He really tends to just take over games a lot. Um, and why it's difficult to identify in Solo Q is because if this Kassadin um, turns out to be a first-time Kassadin, awful player, maybe it's his first time playing League on his friend's account, right? And that's no longer a win condition because that player is not skilled enough to carry the game, even if he's on an OP champ. Right, so you have to identify possible win conditions um, for both teams and then weed them out through the game, <clears throat> right? So if they have a, 
a fed jungle at 10 minutes, you know, their jungle carrying is the win condition um, for for the game. And not only that, but for team fights. Um, so if you see their jungle across map and he has all the power, then, you know, you can engage a team fight and get a little advantage. And, and again, it is a very complex uh, idea, win conditions. Um, but this is just how to go about learning it. Okay, the last one is envisioning your laning phase. So depending on the matchup, you should be able to know um, if at any point do you win an all-in fight. So can I fight him and kill him or force him to back off? And what the situation has to be to do that. Um, you need to decide, do you want to push early, freeze early? Um, do you want to push, have it bounce back to you off their tower and then freeze? You should take into account um, how easily you can escape ganks, right? So if you think there's a good chance you die if you get ganked, then you shouldn't push up. You should try to keep the lane even or keep it on your side. Um, same goes if you're, you know, your opponent can't escape ganks, then maybe you let him push and try to get your jungle to come gank, right? If you're playing Maokai and your jungle's playing Nocturne and um, they're playing Darius... You guys should be able to secure that kill. You have enough CC. You have enough damage. Um, do I need to have pressure to secure, to secure Scuttle for my jungler? This is one of the most important early game things, um, securing Scuttle for the jungler. So if you can push up as the Scuttle spawning, then you can make sure that your jungle gets that Scuttle. Um, you need to know when and where you should ward, um, what skill pass to take, <clears throat> so Garen's a, a new player champion. Most of the time you want to level up Q, but let's say you're playing against a Quinn who's going to be harassing you a lot. Maybe you want to level up your W to decrease the cooldown and increase the shield so you can shield more and just get yourself through those early levels that are a struggle into the later game phases and team fights. Uh, you should also know what your power spikes are. Um, and this isn't just for early laning phase, but throughout the game what items give you your big power spikes that you want to fight after right and it's especially good if you're ahead so as soon as you finish that first item you get a big power spike that's when you want to kind of brawl in lane or force fights throughout the map um, <clears throat> lastly for lane phase can you transition your pressure to anywhere on the map and also the same for your opponent you know if you're ahead in lane can you roam and then pressure their mid laner, usually who gets pressured, or their jungle, right? So you can get a deep ward out. It lets you track their jungle. Maybe you can push them off a of camp or even take a jungle camp. You know, um, a champion that has a hard time pressuring would be one like Garen. You know, you don't have a lot of CC, so it's hard for you to kind of get kills in the mid lane. Um, you can pressure their jungle, though. If you're playing something like Malphite and you have pressure in lane, that frees you up to go places and use the you know really strong Malphite ultimate to get kills elsewhere. So those are just things to keep in mind for laning phase. Always have an idea of what you want to do in different situations. That way when you go out there and you're trying to CS and trade and, and keep track of everything, you already have your yourself prepared and you don't have to add more to your plate in the game. All right, so just in conclusion, um, here's a checklist again for you guys to read. Um, definitely try to think about these things as much as possible. I know it's a lot, and that's the point, right? If you prepare yourselves before the game, then you don't have to also think about these things as much in game. Right, it becomes like flipping switches in game because you've already mentally prepared before the game. Right, so you know um, how you want your lane to go, um, and then you know your lane's going good. You you froze your jungle gain to your head. Now you can transition that to mid lane instead of being in game and going. Okay, what do I do now? You have already set a path for yourself to be successful in game and you already know how to play in these different situations. And I know if you're a new player, or even a relatively experienced player, this is hard to accurately figure out, but it is the best way to get better. Okay, you need to you know, 
try to identify these things and then after your game look back and review what you identified correctly what you identified wrong and then next game you'll be even better at identifying them so i, I think you guys should really give this a try um if you want me to go over anything more in depth or you think something should be added to the checklist or needs further explained uh, please feel free to ask here is my Twitch and uh, Discord. So if I'm ever streaming, you can feel free to uh, go ask me. Um, or maybe I'm not streaming. You want to message me on Discord. Um, you just feel free to add me, send me a message, no problem. Um, and I'll be happy to help you out.